My name's Kathy Reinhardt. This is Karen Adams, and we are the holder specialists. So when you call in and have a question, we're the ones that you're going to be speaking with. Okay, our mission, our personal mission for our holders, which is the business, is you, is to maintain the integrity of the data that we receive. Um, that's for the ease of use for property owners. Um, it's for timely reporting of the property and ultimately paying the claims out to their owners. On our reporting guidelines, the best place to go is www.mine.utah.gov. Um, then you want to click on report property and this page will give you just about everything you want to know. Um, the reports must be in NAPA format, which is the National Association of Unclaimed Property Administrators <laughs> standard format. We're going to talk about UP Exchange first. We have two softwares and um, that are available to you. One is UP Exchange and one is HRS Pro. Um, you know, some of you may use this software because there's two options there. Some of you may have internal, um, you know, programmers that create your reports to us and send them that way. Some of them may use a service outside of what we have here. So there's many ways to do it, but these are the two options that that our state has out there that you can select to use to submit your reports for free. free. For free. After you've completed your your inventory and you're ready to file a report, um, we want you to go to our website and click on UP Exchange. That will take you to um, the NAPA website and then double click on the UP Exchange box there. Okay. At that time, what we're going to have you do is either create a sign-on or else if you've already used UP Exchange once in a while, then you're going to log in to it. On this page also, you can see a lot of resources. They have chats that they can chat. It's a good program where you can call them and they can direct you through any problems you might have with the uh, reporting. Um, they have resources, they have chats, they have email, a phone number to call. So they have their own little group, okay? Once you're signed in, you have a choice of programs. We use the free program. And yes, I've used this before. When I get a manual report, I'll go in and type it in and make it electronic so it can go into the system. Okay, after clicking on the free tab, you're, we're going to um, use the holder tab, the property tab, the reporting tab, the system tab. These are all tabs that can get you through producing a report for Utah. Um, the first tab we're going to go to is the holder tab. On this tab, they want your information as a business. They want who's going to be the contact person. And, and this is information that's going to be fed to us. On this, there's a display number, you know, I'm not sure if you have to fill it in or not. It can be a short name. Um, I like to put the holder number in there, which is a number that we have for you and that you can call and get from me at any time. You can also edit your holders on that uh, page. Say you've uh, reported with UP Exchange before, you can go back in there and edit your holders. If you're a business that has several different businesses that you're going to be reporting for, you can, you can report those individually and add a holder for each one. We're going to continue to property. We're going to either add property or we're going to upload a spreadsheet which would be importing the records. So first off, I'm going to show you where you can receive a spreadsheet. Okay, on this page, you go to import reports, and U UP Exchange has provided spreadsheets that you can download and then 
enter your information so like your IT people can look at it. They can enter the information onto the spreadsheet and then you can come back here and upload it into the UP Exchange and go on. Don't send that spreadsheet to us because we're not going to do the next steps for you. You have to go back and load it through here so that we can just import it through our system. Or you can add the properties individually. Say you had only maybe 15 properties and you don't want to use a spreadsheet. You want to add the properties individually. Right here is the, the add. You click on add new property. You put your information in. Um, we like as much information as you can give us. Um, the relationship codes, they're out there. Um, usually it's sole owner. <laughs> on a lot of them. Also notice there's an alternate filing state and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, just um, put all the information that you can on here because it's surely going to help us find that person. Okay, next is an example of a spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet example that um, your IT people or you can use if you've got a bunch of property that you want to download into a Excel spreadsheet type thing but it's their template so you can use that or like I said add property once you've added your property you're ready to upload I'm, I'm I used a spreadsheet for this okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna upload your property which means you saved your completed spreadsheet you're gonna go back to your computer you're gonna browse and find it and then you're going to upload that template Next, you'll receive a message that says you have uploaded. So click next. And we're going to go on and once you've uploaded the program. Next, it asks you to validate the information that you uploaded. Okay, you click on that. And um, the next few screens are going to ask you certain questions. Like this one here is going to ask you, You've uh, asked us to validate six properties, and the total is $121. Um, is this correct? You know, so you go on to the next page, and at that time you can get a summary sheet <laughs> to help you look and see if the property is acceptable to you. Okay, next. Once we have validated that the totals are right, the count's right, we're going to import the property into UP Exchange. Click on that, and then it's going to ask, you know, is this, we're going to finish it. We're going to say, is this property totaling six properties, and, then, and this is the total, is this correct? And then at that point, this is where you want to Click and finish and finalize the importing of the property. Under property, under view records, you can go in there and you can look at the view of the records and this is where you're going to be able to edit. You're going to be able to say, hey, you know, I need to fix this one particular pro property because it's John James, not John Jones. Okay? Um, also, you want to check and make sure the states are all Utah right here. And this is where I want to mention that if at the end you finalize your property and the balance isn't the same total as what you were dealing with the whole time you were importing this property, a lot of times it's because you've had a last known address of California or Idaho and it is on the Utah report. Well, if you still want to send it to Utah, then you want to go to edit your property, go to the alternate state, and, and put in Utah. Okay? If you don't, you still got your California address and everything there, but you've got an alternate state of Utah, and that will force it to come over and um, attach to our, our Utah report or you, your Utah report. Yeah, no, as far as out-of-state property records, you know, it's only for incidental property. We don't want to be a clearinghouse and receive from you 100 records that has to go to the state of California because that's a lot of work for us, and you should be reporting directly to them under their rules and guidelines. So it's basically for, like, if you have one or two properties, 
it's easier just to send it to us than to have to create three reports or something. And we can ensure the release of your liability coming through us. If you're not worried about that, you could send it through us, but if it's a larger dollar amount, you really ought to send it direct so you can release, be released of that liability. Okay, now you get to report your report. In other words, you're, you finalized your report and um, you go to reporting and state reports, find your state, um, choose your state, make sure your year's okay, go next, then you're gonna think, yes, it's Utah, it's 2013, go next. Verify your amount and verify um, is this a good amount or no it isn't. This is the point where you can go back and kind of fix any errors that you might have also. So there's a lot of places that you can go back and actually go back and correct your report before you finalize it. Okay. Okay, once it's all finalized and you're ready to send it to us, we have an agreement in here that you um, can electronically send your report to us from here. Um, just check that agreement and go next. Make sure you read the information here, that what you're agreeing to sign into, which I'm sure you will. And at this point, there is a place where you can either send a check in manually or you can file it electronically or you can go to our website and file it electronically and just follow the instructions right here make sure you print this reference sheet you're not done until you print this reference sheet because if you're going to send us a check we would like a copy of that reference sheet you will like a copy of that reference sheet for UP Exchange if you have any questions on it where you need to call UP Exchange they're going to need information off the sheet. Close and begin a new report. <laughs> and like I say, you can use this for any of the states. It's a software that's uh, web-based um, and um, we enjoy that and we enjoy HRS Pro, which is gonna be the next thing we're gonna look at. Um, I do have some tips in here. We talked about the alternate filing state and why we want to use that if you're going to send a, another state's address to us. Um, under the systems tab for UP Exchange, they have a place where if you've finalized it, it's ready to be archived, you find out you need to readdress an issue, then you want to do a rollback. Now, um, on these rollbacks, I'm not an expert on them, call UP Exchange, chat with UP Exchange, and they can work you through a rollback. We have the template. Again, this is the template. Down, I wanna mention that down on the bottom of the template, there is an instruction, property, codes, things like that on these different tabs. I didn't take a picture of them, but you can see a sample of one that's filled out. So the spreadsheet isn't just there and say, fill me out. There's instructions on it. Okay, and there's uh, property codes, things like that. Okay, what helps us? Last name first, these are tips that I have. Um, last name first is helping because of a search. If a, if a owner wants to go on our website and search, it's gonna ask for the last name. If you send in Penny Plush and, and instead of Plush Penny, um, they're gonna search for plush and not find Penny. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay, so we ask that you send them into our website. Uh, negative reports are not required. They mentioned that before. Um, nine or less items can be sent in manually. Um, other than not, that. No. electronically we get so much data and last year we got over 40 million dollars so 
we try to get that in the system quickly so that we can start paying out those items. And if you can send it in electronically, it's better. We have a better integrity of the records. You don't have us manually entering something that we think is this letter and it's really that or something. So you have the integrity of that data being kept solid and, and you know, less chance of fraud or anything else. That's fine. Be a dumb question, but what is a negative report? <laughs> oh, that's an easy one. Actually, negative reports is if you do not have to file a report because you have nothing to file that year. Oh, okay. okay. Some states say send us a negative report. Um, when I get a negative report and I just look at it, and if we have the holder already, if there's updated information on it, then I'll put the updated information in our system. But if we don't file a negative report, aren't we red flagged for an audit? No. Not anymore. No. no. Not anymore. It's not required anymore. Okay. Um, tax IDs are required. Both systems have cover sheets to be sent when the payment is made by check. Um, all, all amounts are reportable. Um, you can use an aggregate, am aggregate amount totaling all the properties that are under $50. Um, that kind of means send us a spreadsheet or something showing what's on it, or we'll be calling you back on the aggregate if someone is trying to claim property on it, and we'll need to find out. Tax ID, is that the holder or the owner's tax ID? On the on tax the ID, is the holder's that is required. Right, but okay. if you have the owner's tax ID, you want the owner's. On the individual record, right? It's the holder information on the very first screen. That's the data that comes to us with your report. And each line item that you're reporting. If you have a tax ID number, we want that as well. If we or don't, if we don't have tax the ID, then what do we do? I know. Well, you just you report what you have. If you don't have it, you can't report it. But if you have a vast amount of information and you're just missing one piece, give the state what you have because the more the more information that's part of the NAPA format that can be captured, the better likelihood that they can return that property. Thank you. Thank you. I, I like that. And the aggregate uh, item here is if you have more than one property type, like let's say you have payroll checks and you have checking accounts or whatever, then that's a different property type code for each of those aggregates. You keep those separate. Like that's the payroll might be MS, what is it, 99 or something, and checking might be AC 99 for the aggregate. So there's, so depending on the property, it depends on that aggregate code. I have two comments. If you've already set up your data sheet, like in Excel or something, and you've listed out each individual, and a lot of them are under $50, go ahead and do a cut and paste. We understand. And the other thing is, on your property types and what are they called, relationship codes, mm -hmm. they're in our really swell little pamphlet under reporting property. It's big, but it has examples and tells you what to use and the whole schmear. Uh, on this software, can you override the aggregate limit and say, I want to report everything down to one cent in detail? You can, yeah, you can. Because if you already them. have the records, yeah, just you put already them put them in the spreadsheet. Yeah, just yeah. it doesn't have yeah. to be the yeah. mail. Give them to us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want the records. I want to be able to find these uh, owners of the property. I don't, you know, it, if they're under $50, hey, we want to find them. Okay, call us for help. That's the thing. We're here. We're here for you. Give us a call. If we have owners that are coming back wanting to claim their property and it's basically already been turned over to you guys as of November 1st with our payments and the actual report, how long does it take for you to get records uploaded to the online database or for you to be able to start doing claims or do you work it in an order where you're going with the companies that report the lowest amount and then you work all the way up to the companies that have like the highest amount reported to you? Just so we can give them kind of a time frame of when they can do a claim. We actually import the, the reports as they come in. Okay. So it's by just first come, first serve. Okay. And if you, if you want us to pay a claim, 
you know, you can call us and we can see if we can kind of push that through. Either that or you have the option of paying them out and filing a holder reimbursement. So it's just, you know, if you get your report in first, it's going to get in quicker. There's no set. We just take them as we come. Okay. And if you do a holder reimbursement, as far as our claim side goes, those take priority. Yes. You can try to get the money back to the holder before the claimant has a chance to even go out there and see it. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I hope we help you answer your questions. Okay. I, did, I was just going to give you a quick preview of our website. Yes of our report property. We now have this year as a holder packet that has basically all the information that hopefully that needs to be answered. We also have uh, a step-by-step -step video on how to file a report online. UP Exchange will go directly to our website. HRS Pro, you still have to go, it takes us to your web, our website to upload.